This is the 7700K and this is the video where I'll be taking a look at it. Of course, being a Socket 1151 chip, it means that it will, with a BIOS update, uh, fit and work in the Z170 motherboards from the last generation, and I believe the last generation chips will work in the Z270 boards as well, which is quite nice. It's a quad core with 8 threads, 4.2GHz base clock and 4.5GHz boost clock, which is obviously up 300MHz from the 6700K, uh, and otherwise is fairly similar in that fashion. It's 91 watt TDP, 8 megabytes of L3 cache and all that good stuff. I have a whole load of motherboards that I'm going to be taking a look at. The one on the right here, the Gigabyte Gaming 7, is actually the, the review of that one is out at the same time as this one. So once you're done watching this video, do go check that one out. But otherwise, here's a bit of a foreword before the uh, results and all that sort of stuff. So before we jump into the performance aspect, I wanted to let you know that this is the first review I'm actually including proper overclocking results in. This is awesome, uh, I'm still very new to overclocking, uh, so hopefully this is a, a reasonable uh, you know, run, a reasonable attempt at overclocking it. I did get the chip to 5 gigahertz, uh, and it was stable for Cinebench at 1.395 volts, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't stable for Asus's real bench, so I dropped it down to 4.9 gigahertz, again at 1.395 volts, uh, which again is uh, sort of in the recommended, uh, the stock voltage is 1.3 and the highest recommended Recommended the limit that Intel recommend is 1.45. So, without further ado, this is the performance results, and I'm going to just mention after the results that you see in a second why the Dirt Rally result is a bit of an outlier. For those of you interested, this is the CPU-Z screen here. If you're interested in the family or the TDP or anything else, then feel free to take a look. And this is the caches window for you too. But otherwise, uh, mostly I wanted to show you the bench window, which allows you to see a benchmark comparison between your current chip and a reference. So for example, I've got the 6700K here. Uh, and the reference is obviously a decent bit lower, although this is likely attributed to the clock speed change. Now in my results, as you can see, the extended bars are most likely going to be the overclock results and as you can see, there's about 150 points between the overclocked 6700K, uh, uh, 7700K and the normal clocked 6700K uh, and the SUS Realbench is a very similar uh, score as well, so you're looking at a relatively similar number for the stock uh, frequencies and then when you overclock it, there's a nice uh, bump up, although still not quite as good as the 6900K, the uh, rather expensive 8 core. Otherwise, uh, 3D Mark is a very similar result. Again, uh, only uh, showed the overclocked uh, physics result here, as that's the sort of main CPU bound one. Uh, and as you can see, it is a nice bump up too. GTA 5 was actually a very similar result as well, again, uh, with the 7700K actually performing a little bit less than the 6900K in my testing, although when you overclock it to 4.9, it does a pretty good job of uh, slightly beating the 6900K. This is with a GTX 980 uh, Zotac Amp Extreme. Dirt Rally is uh, the one that I'm going to tell you a little bit more about in a sec, and this is the kind of outlier, uh, the one that I can't quite explain, mostly just because I retested this uh, multiple times and I still got this uh, same result. So uh, yeah, let me uh, explain this one to you. So as I mentioned, uh, and as you've probably just seen, the Dirt Rally result is a bit of an outlier here with the overclocked result running less than the standard 6700K, let alone the 7700K. I honestly cannot explain this. I ran all of the tests, including Cinebench, Realbench, 3D Mark, uh, Dirt Rally and GTA 5, uh, all five to 10 times each per overclock and non-overclock. Uh, and I just, th this was a consistent result. The non-overclocked, uh, you know, 7700K was getting 121 to 122 FPS, whereas the overclocked one was consistently getting 112, 113, 114, 115, uh, with 115 being the highest number that I got. So uh, again, it's a very weird thing and I honestly can't explain it. If you've got any thoughts, feel free to let me know in the comments down below but I did check that it was still running at 4.9 gigahertz the entire run. The temperatures weren't too high uh, and overall everything was updated, the BIOS is up to date and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, it's just a, a very weird thing. Something I want to make clear is that uh, in my testing compared to other users with uh, 6700Ks that overclocked them to 4.9 or 5 gigahertz, the results that I'm seeing are very, very similar to uh, those numbers. They're basically the same clock for clock. The 7700K apparently does have a bit of an architecture change for stuff like uh, video transcoding or at least video decoding uh, for certain video codecs, but otherwise there isn't too much of a massive difference. And the other thing to mention just on the overclocking front is that apparently the thermal interface material 
isn't that great on the uh, 7700Ks, which means if you delid it and change and upgrade effectively the thermal interface material, you could apparently at 5 GHz save yourself 30 degrees Celsius, which is pretty crazy. So can I, in all good conscience and faith, recommend this to a 6700K owner? Well, the answer just has to be no here. It's basically the same chip for all intents and purposes. Uh, if you're planning on buying a new PC though, if you're planning on building a new PC and you don't already have a 6700K, a 4790K, or even a 3770K, uh, then uh, you know potentially this is a very good option, especially if you're planning on gaming and doing video editing, game development, 3D uh, modeling, any of that sort of stuff on top of gaming then I would recommend this chip. If you're just planning on gaming, then the i5 version of this is gonna be plenty fine. And specifically, if you're planning on building a new PC right this second, then you can probably pick up a pretty good deal on the 6700K or the 6600K with a Z170 motherboard uh, if you want it right this very second. Uh, and that will probably be a decent bit better value for money, uh, especially because of the thermal interface material uh, issue as such. But uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of my, my thoughts. It's basically the same chip clock for clock. There's not a massive improvement feature-wise on the motherboards. Uh, obviously, USB 3.1 and Type-C and NVMe SSDs are kind of just more standardized now, and of course, there's more RGB lighting, but uh, yeah, otherwise, that's kind of the main improvements that we've seen. In terms of scoring, I think we're gonna go for a four, four or five for money. In terms of uh, performance, I'm gonna go with a 4.5. It's still a great chip, but it just didn't exceed the last generation that much. In terms of functionality, I'm gonna go with a five here. Uh, style, it's a CPU, so that's gonna be a five. Uh, and Titan GB score, I'm gonna go with a four. It's still gonna get the gold award because it is a great CPU, but it's just not that much improved from last year. But of course, as the stocks for the 6700K and Z170 motherboards slowly die down, you won't be able to get those at a decent price, so therefore this will become the more standard, uh, more commonly uh, purchased chip. So yeah, it's still a great CPU, it's just not that much better better than the last generation. So I guess that's kind of that really. Um, if you uh, want to pick up one of these CPUs, I actually have an Overclockers UK affiliate link now. So if you want to buy them, uh, buy one from Overclockers UK, feel free to use that. Or there's the worldwide Amazon link down there too, uh, if you prefer buying from Amazon or you're just not in the UK. Otherwise, feel free to follow me on Facebook and Twitter as well for more updates and all that sort of stuff. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video and hit the like button. I'd love to hear what you think of this CPU in the comments down below. Would you like to see more overclocking results in future videos? Let me know too. And uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of that really. Feel free to check out the whole uh, slew of Z270 motherboard reviews that will be coming out over the next week. If you're watching this on the day of launch, then there's a uh, Z170 Gigabyte Gaming, uh, Z270 Gaming 7 from uh, uh, Gigabytes uh, that you can check out that went up at the same time as this video. Uh, and there'll be plenty of other videos I think I'm doing about one a day uh, from now until uh, for at least another week anyway. So I've got uh, a fair few for you to check out, so do stick around. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.